News for Women. Hello and welcome to the Feisty News for Women. I am T. Erica. I present important women's issues and fearless feminine voices disrupting our society. Today is April 14th, 2022. Here is the Feisty News for Women. A new bill in Virginia will enforce a hefty consequence for those who send nude or sexually explicit photos of themselves to someone without their consent. When the bill takes effect on July 1st of this year, violators will face a $500 fine for the crime. The bill actually states that the perpetrator will receive actual damages or $500, whichever is greater, in addition to reasonable attorney expenses and costs and punitive damages if it is determined that the act is particularly detrimental. Bumble, a popular dating app that puts women first, supports the law and has also partnered with the Texas Senate to draft and approve a new Texas law that criminalizes the act of sending unsolicited lewd photos online. Bumble is now working on similar legislation in California, Wisconsin, New York, and Pennsylvania after a poll they conducted revealed that half of all women they surveyed had received unwanted nude photos during their lifetime, and one third of women they surveyed had received an unsolicited nude photo within the last month. I want men to understand that sending photos of your privates that we didn't ask for is disgusting. When a woman wants to see your, mm, she will show up and make it very clear. If you want to show a woman something that will impress her, show her a good time without focusing on what you want. Listen up. Knowledge is power. In other news, Cuba Gooden Jr. has pleaded guilty to forcibly kissing a woman at a nightclub in September 2018. The What Dreams May Come actor also admitted to two other incidents of non-consensual contact. In October 2018, Gooding Jr. was accused of pinching the butt of a woman without her consent while at a nightclub in New York City. And in June 2019, the actor was arrested and charged after a woman alleged that he squeezed her breasts while they were at the Magic Hour rooftop bar on June 9th. Gooding Jr. is also facing a civil lawsuit alleging he raped an unidentified woman twice in New York in 2013. Attorney Gloria Allred issued a statement that it had been reported that more than 19 other women came forward and made allegations against Mr. Gooding Jr. Although it's really good that he decided to plead guilty instead of dragging women through a trial, Cuba, let me talk to you. It seems that you believe you are entitled access to any woman's body. You may be the type of man who views women as property. There are many women who enjoy being touched and some enjoy being forcibly touched, but the key here is consent. There's a way to have your deviant fantasies met and that is to hire someone to help you to create them. Stop, think, you are enacting your raunchy erotic desires and causing trauma for women. Forcing women to act out your non-consent fantasies robs women of our fantasies of feeling safe and respected in this world. Your desires are not more important than ours. Keep your hands to yourself or pay someone to let you manhandle them with consent. In other news, 16-year-old Kayla Green was fatally stabbed moments after she participated in a celebration for her high school's basketball team. The 15-year-old suspect, whose name is being withheld because of her age, faces charges of manslaughter in the first degree and attempted assault in the first degree, according to a news release. The suspect had showed off the weapon earlier on social media, the outlet said. She was armed with a knife as she confronted the teen a block away from the celebration. The suspect stabbed Kayla in the back and side before running away. Kayla had just celebrated her 16th birthday three weeks earlier. 
Although there is no clear motive stated, reports indicate that the suspect allegedly had a history of bullying the victim and was prepared for the attack. What happened here? I could guess that this could be a case of extreme jealousy going wrong. Kayla was the captain of the cheerleading squad, known for being elegant, beautiful, and poised to attend college with the goal of becoming a doctor. How do you feel when you see a woman who seems to have it all and you have none of that? It's human nature to compare, so I don't blame you for doing it, but let's not allow our one-sided view of perfection to stop us from understanding true reality. You have no idea what the other person is truly going through, what their life is like. Listen, I've been on both sides of the fence. Some people think that because I'm educated, well-spoken, a light-skinned black woman with green eyes, and I achieve all of my dreams, that I somehow have favor in life, a privilege that they will never attain. Yes, I am all those things, but I've also been homeless. I've also been suicidal. I don't know what it's like to be loved romantically. And to this day, I experience trauma related mental health issues that I cannot stop no matter how much I try. But you don't see that when you look at me. You see what you wanna see. When you wanna feel badly about your life, you look for things to make you feel bad. I used to do the same and sometimes still struggle with that. But thankfully, I have a heart that enjoys seeing women succeed because to me, when I see a woman doing big things, I automatically feel as though it's the sign that one day it could be me. If you're feeling hopeless after watching another woman shine instead of feeling like you have to compete with her, root for her. So into her success. Connect with her. Try to get some of that shine to rub off on you. Your turn will come if you choose to focus on taking action towards what you want instead of what makes you angry. That 15 year old who killed Kayla should have become friends with her and learned Kayla's keys to success instead of trying to drag her down. Now her life is even worse off than it would have been if she had seen Kayla as an inspiration instead of a reminder of what she couldn't be. Your focus is your choice. When you see a woman shining, go stand next to her. You will rise too. I promise. Well, it's time for a break. What happened with, to Britney Spears that made her jump for joy recently? How can a woman find a good man? Those stories and more right after the break. Don't miss it. Hello, my name is Jade. I am the owner and operator of Flick of the Wrist Exclusives. I customize and repair shoes. I'm considered a modern day cobbler. And I also make and customize clothing. A little background information on myself, as transparent as can be, I came from selling and using drugs. At one point I ended up hitting rock bottom and I was just bored playing around with the shoe one day. I customized the shoe and put it on social media and it blew up from there. And in the process of it, God allowed me to use that platform on social media to begin to tell my story of the things that happened to me when I was in the streets and I began to heal and my business began to grow. It has been such a journey. It's been amazing because prior to, I couldn't even draw anything besides my name, you know, and to be able to do some of the things that God has allowed me to do now, it's been miraculous. Thank you. Welcome back. I am T. Erica with the feisty news for women. Girl, guess what? Britney Spears is pregnant. The 40-year-old pop star made the announcement on her Instagram account a few days ago and has since shared updates about her pregnancy with fiance Sam Asghari. This will be Britney's third child, the pregnancy happening just six months after she was released from her controversial 13-year conservatorship. Cheers to Britney Spears for creating a new chance at life after such a tough decade she just left behind. New energy, new freedom, new baby, new life. Who this? Pain doesn't last forever and Britney is proof. Enjoy this next chapter of life, Britney. 
In other news, we're living the feisty life, which means we make decisions that are best for us, regardless of what anyone else thinks. In a world where women are constantly on guard to protect ourselves against attacks from men, there are women who have found safety and inspiration from men who know how to love them properly. In this week's edition of He's a Good Man, we're featuring Nancy as she shares her story of how a good man changed her life. Hey, Nancy, how in the world did you find a good man? The thing I loved about Jim the most in the beginning was just that he was so much fun. I was had been widowed at a young age. I'd been a single mom for several years, and I hadn't had very much fun in my life. So it was just refreshing to be with someone that knew how to be goofy and silly and turn everything into fun. But it was obvious that he was seriously looking for a wife after losing his wife, first wife, to a long illness. And he seemed to be falling in love with me. And I kept putting the brakes on, like, slow down, slow down. Uh, finally, when I was ready to say, one evening I did say to him, if there's any possibility that we would make a good marriage, I have a few things I'm concerned about that I'd like to talk about. <clears throat> we were sitting in his car, he grabbed his steering wheel and he says, okay, shoot, tell me what's first on your list. And I actually think that's when I fell in love with him that he was willing to talk about my feelings, uh, issues, issues that were difficult for me, things that I needed answers to before I could commit myself to him. <clears throat> and just one by one, I shared with him my concerns and he answered very honestly, very truthfully, no defensiveness. And um, I liked his answers. Then, uh, we a few months later we did marry and combined our two families we had five children between us four of them were teenagers uh, one eight-year-old tornado that was Jim's but we had a, a difference of opinion that was started out very small and in the beginning we could work it out kiss and make up make a new agreement but as the agreements uh, fell apart. They didn't work long term. We each became more and more frustrated. And um, our communication methods deteriorated. Finally, we began looking for some help and eventually found a coach that began to teach us some ways of speaking respectfully, even when we were in conflict, uh, some very practical ways to manage our anger. And Jim was right in there with me, willing to learn and practice these new skills because we both wanted the result of a happy and more loving marriage. He was very confident in his own accomplishments and his own abilities. And I think for that reason, he didn't, he didn't feel any sense of threat. The more accomplished I became, the more uh, the more I was able to produce, the the more excited he was for me. He wanted other people to be exposed to my intelligence and my skill in coaching. After he passed away in 2005, I wasn't sure that I would keep doing what I what we had been doing together. But after the dust settled, I realized there was nothing else I was passionate about. I still wanted to help other couples achieve the level of happiness that Jim and I had achieved in our marriage. Uh, over the next, it's been 17 years now since he passed, I still feel his belief in me and his support of me. Uh, I miss holding hands with him. I miss cuddling. I miss his presence in our home. And I also miss the fact that my very best and most enthusiastic cheerleader is not physically present with me anymore, although I still know he's cheering for me. 
Thank you, Nancy, for celebrating Jim and allowing women everywhere to see and believe that good men do exist. Jim, we appreciate your love for Nancy and your legacy will never be forgotten. Thank you, Jim, for being such a good man. Well, thank you for watching the Feisty News for Women. I am T. Erica. Remember, be feisty. Women must be seen and heard. Welcome to the Feisty. Welcome to the Feisty.